Halo's approach to pistol design is quite different from most shooters. Instead of treating the little things as glorified pop guns like most shooters, it makes sure that they're strong enough to be with the big boys. Throughout every Halo game, each iteration of this tiny compact terror has a role within the game, whether it be big or small or in the garbage. Let's explore the different versions of the Magnum. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be appreciated. I'm not pathetic. Halo CE's Magnum is notorious for being one of the best guns in Halo. It's the first gun you'd receive in the campaign, and in multiplayer, it's sort of a jack-of-all-trades. Your go-to gun in the event that you need something that's sort of good at everything, even if it's not perfect at everything. It and the sniper rifle share the common quirk that it has a unique reload where the gun is cocked after an empty mag. It's quite bulky for a handgun, and the mere act of firing it demonstrates that this was probably made for a seven-foot-tall super soldier and not your everyday marine. In the campaign, it's quite good at reliably killing unshielded enemies as well as elite miners, but its real strengths come when combining its reliability with that of another gun. This is where the noob combo comes from. Obviously, the Magnum isn't perfect at everything. Shotgun is better at close quarters, assault rifle is better at consistently outputting a ton of damage and clearing out the flood, the plasma rifle is a fantastic gun to stun the elites as they try to flee, drain their shields, and then follow up with a quick melee attack. But this little Magnum? You can always rely on him to be pretty good at everything, even if he's not perfect. The Magnum fits into Halo CE's campaign sandbox perfectly. It's reliably good when on harder difficulties, but it's not good enough to where it makes the other guns obsolete. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Now the second iteration of the Magnum is its multiplayer component. You heard me correctly. The multiplayer version of the Magnum is different from the campaign version. It's not a huge difference, but it's enough to where future versions of Combat Evolved that forgot this little detail definitely left the Magnum feeling odd in multiplayer. Not exactly how you remember it feeling but we'll get to that later. In multiplayer, Bungie is a patch that's applied when you boot up a multiplayer match that automatically adjusts the values of the gun. Why was this done? My friend who knows the code better than me theorizes that disagreements must have been had in Bungie about how it should perform in the multiplayer. So this patch was written up to reset the values to normal or alter them depending on if you're playing the campaign or split screen multiplayer. In multiplayer, the Magnum is trusty and reliable, kind of like its campaign counterpart. It kills in just three hits if you land all your shots on the head, and it has a pretty fast time to kill because of it. Now that's not to say you should always use it. Make sure you're smart with the weapons that you pick up, because the Magnum can't outperform a skilled player with a shotgun in close quarters, or a sniper at long range. The Magnum won't get the kills for you, that's up to you. If you want to hold down the trigger to full auto it and miss all your shots, it's your own fault. The beauty of the Magnum is how it could outperform a shotgun or rocket at close range. It all depends on your ability to track the target and strafe and make sure you have good aim. There's a reason it's remembered so fondly within the esports scene, and why Halo carries a legacy of being that series with the really good pistol. In the description, I'll link an excellent Reddit post that talks a bit about it, and I want to thank the esports players that I talked to earlier this week about their views on the Magnum in competitive multiplayer. If Halo's so good, then where's Halo 2? Well, Halo 2 is right here. It released in 2004, and while its campaign was a bit controversial, it's hard to deny the success of the multiplayer. Specifically, the online play via the brand new Xbox Live. It also got a new Magnum. It's a bit shorter, stockier, and sports darker colors, but what it lacks in presentation, it surely makes up for in performance, right? This is Magnum 2, the sequel to Magnum CE, after all. Right? Unfortunately, the role that the Magnum of CE filled was given over to the new Battle Rifle, a new three-burst scoped weapon, and due to the new dual-wielding mechanic, changes were made to various guns across the board so that they played best with another weapon in hand. And these changes hit our buddy hard. As to not disrupt the Battle Rifle's new role of go-to weapon, 
The Magnum was subjected to a ton of changes. It now requires 13 shots to the head to kill instead of the three of Combat Evolved. Its fire rate was sped up, but it hardly mattered, seeing as the scope was removed, the range was reduced, and on top of it all, its accuracy was nearly one-fourth of what it used to be. One person I talked to suggested that Bungie may have made it so unusable in the hopes that people would make use of the new dual-wielding system, such as maybe dual-wielding the noob combo. But seeing as a battle rifle was more accurate at a range and could even reliably kill opponents when on its own without help, it wasn't even helped by the fact that dual-wielding meant you couldn't throw a grenade, swap your weapon, or punch them, unless you wanted to fling the gun in your left hand onto the ground and admit defeat on the whole dual-wielding thing. The Magnum was not a weapon worth seeking out anymore. The dual wielding system was kind of clunky and actually discouraged you because it severely limited your abilities. It's really telling that it had no place in the Halo 2 competitive matches. Nobody could find a place for it in competitive. It was simply not usable. I wish I could say it was at least useful in the campaign, but it wasn't. The same problems from multiplayer carried over here. It was too weak on its own and its weaknesses were not improved with dual wielding. Holding a plasma pistol and magnum made it slightly usable, but it was too inaccurate to reliably land headshots, and since you couldn't throw grenades or melee, you're better off with just using the battle rifle, which was all around better. At least it was small, so it looked kinda cute in your hand. It's kinda like a toy. What's this? Why are we talking about Halo CE again? Well, dear viewer, it's because among the many differences and inaccuracies in Gearbox Software's port job to PC, the Magnum in multiplayer is actually different from its original Xbox multiplayer counterpart. Remember before when I mentioned that there's a patch in CE that changes the value of the gun when you go from campaign to multiplayer? Well, Gearbox probably didn't know this, and hence the PC version doesn't contain this patch. The multiplayer Magnum on PC is equal to its campaign counterpart. And while the layman probably wouldn't notice, the pros certainly did. And it does feel a bit off in the multiplayer, seeing as it's slightly more inaccurate because it's tuned to a campaign setting. What's really unfortunate about this is future re-releases of Combat Evolved are not actually built off of the original Xbox version, but rather the inaccurate Gearbox software PC version. Here's to hoping 343 eventually gets around to future-proofing the original Xbox version of the game, so we don't have to keep misremembering Combat Evolved as its broken Gearbox software port. Whoever said the road to recovery was an easy one? Halo's Magnum really let itself go into, but like any good friend, Bungie got the Magnum the help it needed. After an intervention and three years later, the Magnum was back. It's noticeably gained some weight. It's sporting a new paint job that's a bit more reminiscent of its Combat Evolved days. But is it as good as its Combat Evolved days? The Halo 3 Magnum is a bit interesting because there are some elements to its usefulness that are kind of outside of the player's control, but let's at least look at how it is on paper. Its damage has been dramatically increased. It kills in 5 shots, its fire rate was lowered, but its accuracy was increased so it's viable when dual wielding or not. Even if there isn't really a good reason to use it seeing as the battle rifle exists, which can be easily swapped to. But the Magnum is a lot more useful now than it was previously, and an improvement is still an improvement. Its magazine was sadly downgraded to just 8 rounds and the scope that was removed in Halo 2 has still not made a return. And in competitive multiplayer, it still doesn't have a place. And rightfully so. I rather like the Halo 3 Magnum. It's not perfect, but it was good enough for me. When it was behaving. You see, Halo 3 is a hard game to talk about because there are many elements of its balancing that are outside of the player's control. Bungie was a bit odd with how they designed the netcode that Halo 3 uses. They switched from hitscan in Halo 2 back to the projectile bullets of Combat Evolved, but the projectile bullets move noticeably slower than they did in Combat Evolved. And the netcode of the game actually prioritized grenade and equipment placement on a map over a player's position or the location of the shots that they fire. This essentially means that if a grenade began rolling around, or a piece of equipment began bouncing around or moving, the netcode would freak out 
and focus on those items instead of your shots and hitboxes. When considering this, think of how many grenades are being lobbed around, or how many things are being flung around in a standard Halo 3 match, and you can see why Halo 3's hit detection felt so wonky at times, even in close quarters. When people criticize Halo 3's balancing, sometimes it's hard to tell if it was genuinely the gun's balancing at fault, or if the netcode was just screwing you over because it decided to focus on a displaced grenade like some dog chasing a squirrel. Halo 3 is a silly game, but it's my favorite silly game. Flaws and all. This one will be rather quick, seeing as there isn't really a multiplayer here to talk about. ODST was a standalone Halo campaign that took place during the events of Halo 2, and because of the ODST elements, the campaign pays lip service to the idea of stealth. Stealth really hasn't changed here, the silenced weapons you get don't actually provide any stealth bonus, but it's nice to pretend, and it lends to the spooky atmosphere of the game. Though there aren't any skeletons, so it's not that spooky. The ODST Magnum is a bit closer to the Halo 2 version in that it has a fast fire rate, pathetic damage output, and a darker color scheme, but unlike Halo 2, this one benefits from a scope and increased accuracy at a range which means while it won't be able to reliably gun down shielded or armored targets, it does have a range to it and it can ensure an insta-kill headshot at a distance again. It's not my favorite Magnum, but its style is hard to ignore. Ditch it for the carbine though. As a final hurrah for Bungie's vision of the series, the Magnum put on its prettiest dress and was given a new high-quality model. While it may not resemble the Combat Evolve Magnum quite as much as the Halo 3 one, they did bring back the alternate reload animation from CE when your gun is completely empty. It sports a grimier aesthetic and comes across more like a piece of military equipment designed for Spartans rather than a handgun for normal human use. The scope is back, and same with the sexy pistol flip animation when you melee. Due to Reach's rather aggressive weapon recoil bloom, you can't spam your shots and rather you need to pace them, which can unfortunately lead to you getting killed more often than not. At a close range, it's a fair weapon to switch to against opponents, but don't bother with ranged gunfights unless you're very good at controlling your spam. The DMR is unfortunately a more preferable choice, but it's definitely the best Magnum Halo had seen since CE. This Magnum actually did have a twin brother. In the special No Bloom No Sprint playlist that most pro players swear by is the best modern Halo experience, the Magnum is quite good. It's able to reliably get kills at a range, and its small magazine meant that it didn't completely swallow up the DMR's role. I'd love to try this playlist someday with subscribers. Maybe someday. Chief is back, and thankfully, the Halo 3 Magnum was left adrift in space. Halo 4's Magnum is similar to Reach's in a lot of ways. Same scope, same pistol flip, same general body design as well, even though it's missing a few details. Mainly, the lights on the sight of the gun, which unfortunately becomes a bit of a pattern for UNSC weapons. It's quite reliable in multiplayer as a sidearm, due to it retaining many of the pros from Reach and losing some of the cons such as the aggressive weapon bloom, though it is still smart to pace some of your shots. Unfortunately, Halo 4's choice to remove the D-scope mechanic makes it hard to justify using it in gunfights at a range since you won't be able to knock your opponents out of scope if they are scoped in at you. It's a good weapon to use in the campaign as its reliability and fast fire rate complement its scope nature well. In multiplayer, however, it's hard to justify using it outside of those quick moments when your primary is out of ammo and you gotta switch. The descoping mechanic made sure that pistol users were rewarded for their accuracy and ability to stay on top of the enemy. Removing it really threw a monkey wrench into that whole thing. It's a pity, because I do think on paper this could have been the best version of the Magnum. But that lack of descope, man.
With the release of the MCC came Halo 2 Anniversary Multiplayer. The original Halo 2 Magnum was a poop from a butt. So how is the Halo 2 Anniversary Magnum? It's still a poop from a butt. It kills in only two less shots than the original. That makes 11 headshots to kill somebody. And it's a bad gun for bad people. Don't use it. Ever. It does have the pistol flip for some reason. This is going to be a tough one, seeing as Halo 5 is a pretty large number of Magnums. In this game, the Magnum got a massive visual overhaul. This is the biggest change to the Magnum in the series. It now sports a darker color scheme. The general frame of the weapon is less bulky, and it looks a bit more like a pistol than the hand cannons of old. And its flip animation when meleeing was replaced with the little bop that Halo 2's through ODST used. Like all weapons in Halo 5, instead of scoping, you can now aim down the sights, and this tightens up your accuracy and bullet magnetism, which makes it effective at ranges. In the multiplayer, the Magnum is excellent. A little bit too excellent, maybe. Halo 5 had a massive balancing patch to try to lower the effectiveness of the DMR and the battle rifle, and while that's all good and dandy, the Magnum, like a crime lord or something, took advantage of the power vacuum and now dominates the competitive scene as the most reliable weapon in the game. It definitely is one of the best magnums in the series, and that may not be a good thing this time around. Outside of the base model, you can acquire a variant of the magnum that comes with a pretty little extended magazine that grants you 50% more ammo. Another variant of the magnum is actually a pretty cool one. The gunfighter magnum is noticeably stripped down probably to make it lighter, hence why it's so quick on the draw. It's got a tactical magazine that also makes for lightning quick reloading. In my opinion, it's a lot more interesting to use than the base magnum of Halo 5. This weapon's strength is not how reliable it is at all ranges, but how it's a nice little backup plan that you can quickly whip out when things get heated in close range. It allows for the DMR and the battle rifle to dominate at their respective ranges, while providing a little peace of mind that you have something you can swap to really quickly in the event that you have no time to reload. The tactical magnum is a bit of a callback to ODST visually. It's got the front barrel guard thing stripped off and instead seems to be outfitted with a suppressor and targeting laser. Its animation when aiming down the sights is also a bit more familiar to classic Halo fans. It allows for more clarity when aiming since you don't have a massive gun model in the way. The suppressor also keeps you off the radar, which is pretty cool, I guess. If it weren't for... The Whispered Truth. The Whispered Truth is a Magnum variant that is pretty heavily modified. It sports a brighter paint job, has the Latin phrase always vigilant on it, and has a suppressor with other parts stripped off. It's modified to fire in burst shots and gives you a speed boost whenever pulled out. Interestingly, it closely resembles the Magnum Buck is seen fiddling with in the campaign. Could this be the same Magnum? Finally, we have the crowning achievement of Halo Pistols. This is the Combat Evolved Magnum brought to Halo 5. It obviously doesn't exactly resemble the old model. In fact, it more closely resembles the model used in third person instead of the first person one. It also features slightly different animations, but animations that were clearly created in the spirit of the old ones. Halo 5 is a game that uses hitscan and has rather aggressive bullet magnetism to make up for the thrusters and enhanced mobility. So all of that combined with the three shot kills, this is the best version of the Combat Evolved Magnum. As long as you don't hold the trigger, your shots will almost always land. And even if I do feel a little bit guilty using it since it's so broken in Halo 5, I won't deny it's fun to rack up those kills. Halo is a series with many entries, which means many different takes on one class of gun. While this video didn't exactly go as in-depth as I would have liked, I do think it was fun to briefly go over the different incarnations of our favorite guns. Which would you like me to cover next? Comment below, and maybe like and subscribe. I want to pass the open mic on to you guys. What is your favorite Magnum in the series? And I'm actually going to be answering a question from Liam Devon at the end of this video. He essentially asks if new players will be confused by the series since it's dropping the numbers from its titles. I don't think players are clueless. I think that they'll be able to follow along. 
And I think dropping the numbers from the titles is more evident on what 343 is planning with the series. I think they're going to be focusing a lot less on these grand story arcs, like the Reclaimer Saga. And they're going to be focusing more on just Halo. They want to make each individual story for the different games accessible, so that you don't feel like you have to carry around an entire two decades of story baggage just to understand each campaign. I think that's part of why they are dropping the numbers from the titles, and part of why I'm not exactly too worried. I hope that that answered your question, man, and everyone else, I hope you have a good day.